Hello everyone, this is Ryu here. Um, just thought I would get up and say um, thank you for everybody who's actually watched the um, Lufia Curse of the Sinistrals playthrough. Hope everybody actually enjoyed that. Um, I thought I would actually take my take this time to do like the call an overview of the game itself. Usually for certain RPG games, I like to do an overview. I won't do, and I kind of give like my review about what I think about what the game should have changed or what the game should have did or didn't do or things like this. I'm not going to sit here and, and do a full review of the game because that's not, that, that, that's not me. I just want to do what I like to call an overview. So, like I said before, if you never, if you didn't really actually see in the um, comment section below, um, Lufia Curse of the Sinistrals is actually a retelling of the Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals um, for the Super Nintendo. Now, if you never, I mean, if you never actually played um, any either of the Lufia games before, I'm trying to give, I'm trying to give. Um, a short version of it. Basically, there is a main character named Maxim who has red hair, like at all the red, and he basically is a monster hunter. Well, at first, um, he basically goes around, he fights all these monster stuff, and then he's basically the chosen one who's supposed to go through and um, with with, with um, a team of people to go through and fight off the Sinistrals who are trying to take over the world and rule it in their image and do stuff like this and everything else like that. So that's basically, I mean, I'm sorry if that's not really a good overview, but it's kind of just like, you know, redhead swordsman who he, he basically goes through, slashes up a whole bunch of monsters, does a whole bunch of things, and he gets, you know, he gets a legendary blade, and he becomes a legendary hero, and then in the other games that follow, um, the main characters are always descendants of Maxim. So that's that's basically how the storyline goes. Now, um, a lot of things I can say about the game. Um, I kind of like the way how um, the things I actually liked about the game was though was that you know it stayed true to the Luffy Rise of the Sinister storyline. I mean, yeah, it kind of changed a lot of. I mean, yeah, it kind of changed a lot of things mostly because they probably couldn't just they probably couldn't just release the same the, the same as that Super Nintendo game over again. But they kind of made it shorter than I say because the Super Nintendo version has way too many puzzles in it some of the puzzles I'm gonna get to later in the I'm gonna get to later on in this overview which are really just kind of annoying and frustrating and eh, to get through and um, I'll get to that in a minute and um, other stuff, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, the graphics are nice. Um, the controls are kind of eh, are kind of iffy a little bit from time to time. Sometimes, the, I mean, I mean, sometimes they work. I mean, sometimes, I mean, you, you control pretty good as as you want. Um, as you saw before, you can actually over level the crap out of your characters nonstop. Um, so that's that's basically what I like to call good things about this game. Um, sorry, if, like I said, sorry if I didn't really say everything good about this game 100%, but. I mean, I want to, but, you know, there's a lot of bad things about this game I want to talk about for right now here, though. The bad things about Lufia, Curse of the Sinistrals, is like this. One, um, some of the music in the game just didn't fit the area. Lajimos Temple is a good example when you're above ground, because the music for that, if you never played Luffy or Rise of the Sinistrals before, in Curse, I mean, for on Lajimos Temple and Curse of the Sinistrals, um, if you ever, if you ever again, but, blah, 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 sorry, it's not too much, but talking on myself, but um, if you ever been to a mountain, any kind of mountain theme in Luffy or Rise of the Sinistrals, you hear that theme. It sounds adventurous. It sounds like you're going to be there for a while. It sounds, you know, you know, it, I mean, I mean, it kind of sounds pumped up and everything else like this. Lajimos Temple. Above ground just doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit, in my opinion. Um, and the main, and the main song that really didn't fit here though is the final boss with Deus, because you basically hear the Luffy One boss theme. I mean, I, I mean, I can understand if it was the Luffy One final boss theme, but it's the boss theme of Luffy One. <coughs> Excuse me. Which I don't really think actually fits for him. And the other thing that doesn't fit as well here, though, is hearing is when you fight Goddess for the last time, you know, a video on part 40, you basically hear, you know, the regular battle theme for him. Like, they basically kind of went, oh, Goddess, he's a joke by now. It's like, you can't, you know, you know, you know, he's a sinistral. You can't give him the sinistral battle theme or the boss theme, at least. 
I mean, yeah, you gave the ball skin to Amon, but you didn't actually give um the ball skin to Goddess. And the other thing about it was, uh, it also pulls off a Luffy a three kind of thing as well. Here, I mean, Luffy a uh, Luffy not Luffy three, but um Luffy a Fortress of Doom. Because if you remember that, you know, it all the sinisters you got Goddess, Amon. Aram and Deus. Now, in if you never played Sinistral, I mean Sinistral, uh, Lufia, um, the Fortress of Doom before, um, in that game you only fight three of the four Sinistrals. I mean, at first you kind of fight four of them, and then later on, but you get to the end of again, you only fight three of them. In this game, they kind of do the exact same formula again. You only fight three of the four Sinistrals. One of them you just have to dodge for a while, and um, when I was actually doing, when I was actually looking stuff up and everything here, though, you cannot fight her until you actually play a new game plus, or Aram. You can't fight Aram whatsoever in the whole entire game whatsoever here, though, which I kind of think was kind of like, okay, I, I mean, I can understand the way they were going here, though, but at the same time, it would have been nice if they did something like, you can hit her one good time, and then the fight would end, not just dodge forever the whole time. And things, you know, and not just dodge the whole time. Um, another thing about was though is that when they actually shortened the game, because Luffy: Rise of the Sinistrals is actually a pretty long Super Nintendo game. I think it's, I know it's like 24 plus hours. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I never really actually um, um, estimated how many hours it'll take to actually get through that whole entire game. But I know it's pretty long to get through. Pretty fun, pretty long, but. Throughout the whole entire game of Rise of the Sinistrals, there's so much character development because you get to know about, you know, the characters, what they like, what they hate, why the Sinistrals were evil, about Dual Blade, things like this. You get to find out all this wonderful, wonderful stuff. Information and everything here, though. With Curse of the Sinistrals, because, because it's basically kind of like a shorter version of Rise of the Sinistrals, for Super Nintendo, Curse of the Sinistrals is, that they, they basically took out a lot of the stuff that was in the Super Nintendo game, in my opinion, that they should have left in. Because, in my opinion, the game basically went, oh, the Sinistrals are trying to take over the world, and you have to go and fight them because they're because they're evil. And it's like, um... Uh, <laughs> it's just, it just feels just weird. And everything here, though. Um, a lot of the puzzles... And you know, so just jump into other things that are. Um, a lot of the puzzles and curse of the Sinistrals are actually like really easy to get through. Um, besides some of them in Lajimos below Temple, some of them are kind of like you have to look up. But a lot of them are just you know trial and error, like with the um with the tower. It took me a couple times to actually figure out, you know, about how to shine the light in different angles in order to actually get so to actually make the floor you know you know to get the whole floor shined up. You know, either looking at a walkthrough one good time or actually just do a trial and error. But now I'm gonna get to the puzzles of why Rise of the Sinistrals is so ugh for. Is there's two puzzles in that game I hate doing. I hate doing those puzzles every time I play the Super Nintendo game. And people who have played the Super Nintendo game before probably know these puzzles. I'm gonna start off with the one that's most annoying and then the one that's sort of annoying in my opinion. Um I don't remember what the area is in Rise of the Sinistrals, but there's actually an area where you have to either use the fire arrows or you have to cut some weeds in order to get through the door. And if you take too many steps, the weeds grow, and then you have to reset the puzzle over again. That's the most annoying puzzle in that whole entire game. And anybody who's ever played Rise of the Sinistrals before know that puzzle is so dang on annoying. It is like, ugh, it's frustrating to get to that whole entire puzzle. Um, the second one, this it's sort of kind of my least favorite, but I mean, a lot of people may not like it. I mean, mainly, like, I mean, I don't like it here though. Is the um, the Treasure Sword Shrine puzzle where you have to um when you have to um turn all the blocks a certain color either red or blue i think it is and you have to turn them i think if i think if you turn them all blue or all red some i can't remember what color it is in order to actually get to the boss in order to get to that fun little boss thing i had to actually look at a walkthrough to actually get through that one those are like the only two puzzles i actually had to look at a walkthrough for because um, I mean, the weeds puzzle is annoying as I don't know what to do, but I think, but I also think the Treasure Store Shrine puzzle in that whole entire game is the only one that's kind of annoying itself. I mean, 
the only puzzles basically in Curse of the Sinistrals that's really annoying and really terrible about it here though is um um uh, Lajimos Underground. Um some of them puzzles in that game some of them puzzles because you have to um uh, step on all the blocks before you can um before you can um put the um before you can um put the um the block on the switch, I think it is, or you, or until you can jump over to the other side. Some of them puzzles kind of, you know, you kind of have to draw out with a piece of paper or map it out with your finger or, you know, take time off and try it again. Because, I mean, I didn't really go through every single door to get every single treasure when I played, when I played through it, but I just kind of just went through it all the way through. Um, for what I, I mean, when I actually played through it before, and yeah, some of the puzzles in Lajimos Temple are actually pretty annoying, but that's the only puzzle I can say for right now here though, that's the most annoying. Um when I first played it, the um the one puzzle when you had to slide the uh fire block in the um mountain of no return. That puzzle at first got to me at first, but then I kinda of figured it out that while I went, Oh, that's how you're supposed to do it, Durr. I knew I was supposed to slide so and so there and I feel like a moron now. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, but, so, basically, in conclusion, for this whole entire thing, I know I'm probably not doing a really good overview for right now, here, though, and I do, and I am sorry about that, but, um, if I had to say which game I actually think is better, Rise of the Sinistrals or Curse of the Sinistrals, um, even though Curse of the Sinistrals did try to make a good game, and even though it is, it is still a good game to play through, I'm not gonna sit here, and I'm not gonna sit here and be like, this game sucks, no. Um, it is it is actually a pretty good game to actually to actually see a retelling of Rise of the Sinister storyline. Um, the still the best game to me will always be Rise of the Sinistrals. Um, that game will always be like the best game of all time because not only did it actually have all the character development I, in, in in the game and needed everything you know, um all the music in the game fit the area you know the puzzles themselves were all challenging. Yeah, the whole turn base battle system was, yeah, you know, a lot of people kind of say, you know, well, the action battle system was actually better, but to me, I like the turn-based system, and the other thing about it was, though, I like also having the friendly monsters. Um, I kind of think if they actually put the friendly monsters in Curse of the Sinistrals, the game itself would have been better, since you can actually train your monsters to fight with you, because the trick because yes the friendly monsters in rise of the Sinistrals did make the game easier to did make the game a whole lot easier when you fought certain bosses off and when you fought certain enemies off and things like this but at the same time um it also but it was also fun just to level them up to see how high i mean how powerful you can make them and then see what they can do to help you out so when you're level you know with like your level grinding or when you're fighting off certain enemy and things like this it was it was it was always like amazing in the whole entire game but rise of the Sinistrals to catch I mean I mean try to get every single friendly monster level them all the way up train them level them up you know feed them different items and equipment and then just um um and then you know and then just send them out there to the battlefield and say this is okay what can you do what can you do cuz I mean to me the the best monsters in the party, I could say for Rise of the Central, that's actually pretty fun to have it there. Was like Foamy, and I like the dragon. Um, the dragon, once you level him up, I think it's like I think it's like Blaze. I think it is. Once you level Blaze up, he is like devastating. <laughs> I mean, he can almost like I mean, he could basically like almost like drain bosses HP down almost like halfway. Sometimes once you get him, I mean, once you get him on um, powered up good enough. It's like it's like whoa. I mean, other monsters in that game I think are actually pretty fun as well, though. But um, it would actually been nice if they actually um, um, you know, kept you know put the friendly monsters in in um, Curse of the Sinistrals. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually do the, anything with the egg dragon because I don't really know what all the egg what all the um egg um dragon eggs are. And um. I wasn't, and um, I, I didn't really, I mean, I didn't really actually do HK Cave because I kind of thought I will bore everybody half a death. It's seeing me having to, I mean, seeing uh, me go all the way down, I don't know about how many floors, like 50, 60 floors, just to see the giant slime boss at the bottom. I thought that would be kind of boring that well. It's on the one to watch, I mean, you know, to watch a whole playthrough of me going down there and everything here, there. Um, maybe in the future I may actually show it off, I don't know. But for right now, I'm just saying, this game is done. 
now and hope everybody enjoyed but like I said before um the best game to me will always be the Super Nintendo version um the DS version yes it's okay as a retelling but is it better than the Super Nintendo version no it's not it's not as it's, it's it's not as great as the Super Nintendo version is. Super Nintendo version would still be better than the um um than the um DS version I just uploaded. But hope everybody actually enjoyed the playthrough. And you know, sorry I didn't actually explain everything when I was doing this overview thing. I mean, I'm, like I said, if I'm I'm not I'm not really 100% good at doing um, reviews all that much. But I thought I would just sit here down here and give my two cents to say you know this is what I think about the game and. This is why I think they should have they should have done differently, or this is why I think they should they should have put in, or things like this. And um, hope everybody actually looking forward to seeing what I upload next time. This is Ryu here. Later.